I'm assuming you already built and flew a tumblewing and jagwing because the baby bug glider builds on that. Rough cut out a baby bug pattern close to the outside solid line. Center it on another small piece of foam. Equal amount of foam sticking out from each side. Tape the ends, but do not fold the tape over to the other side. Cut on the front solid lines and the back solid lines, but do not cut off the ends where the tape is holding the foam to the pattern. Yet, color the tape if it helps you remember, as you did with the Jagwing. Use a book so the elevons and the dashed line peek out and push the paper down to make the folds. Take it out, turn 90 degrees so the middle dashed line peeks out and fold down again. Take it out and pinch to really establish the folds, but only pinch right at the folds. Pinching a wider area of foam would weaken and warp it. Now flatten all these folds a little. You'll get the exact angles later. As you saw with the Jagwing, curving the front of a wing yields greater lift, and with this baby bug design, it's important that you get it right. With the foam side down, paper pattern side showing up, I use my fingers and a thin pen or pencil to roll the camber into the front of the wing. Just rolling over the wing won't curve it. But if you tip the glider over a book and line up one front edge of the glider parallel with the book edge, then rolling does push the foam glider against the curve, making a curve. I roll up to the edge of region 1 tip up and roll more in region 2, and tip up the most and roll the most and hardest on region 3, right up to the edge. Do the same for the other half of the wing. Eventually you can experiment with different wing cambers, but to start with, this wing gauge can help you tell if you have a good curve, if you cut very carefully with the tips of a good pair of scissors. It's designed to measure curve right here only, where the elevons start and parallel to the center line. Try to get it close. You can do more adjusting when the pattern's off. I'm going to mark the foam side as top to avoid confusion again and separate the pattern off by cutting on the solid lines on the sides. Save the paper pattern for another glider. It's good to measure the camber again with the pattern off. Remember, the gauge measures the curve where the flap begins. You can measure from the top, too. There's also a gauge for the elevons this time. We want the elevons to be bent up 45 degrees, and we can use the gauge to measure it, either like this from the top of the wing, or like this from the bottom. The actual angles are not 45 degrees, but if you put the point at the crease, they can show when the elevon is at 45 degrees. This elevon is angled too much. The gauge only hits it here. If you just push the elevon with the gauge, it just springs back. It has to be bent down enough so it stays down and contacts the side of the gauge evenly, like that. This elevon is angled too little. The side isn't hitting the gauge at all so we have to bend it up more, like that. The elevons can go out of adjustment, so check them from time to time. For dihedral, the middle should be bent enough that when you press the top of one wing down, the tip of the other wing should be at least half an inch or 13 millimeters above the table. Pull out another short wire, and with a tiny piece of tape, attach it to the foam so it sticks out in front as much as possible. Bend in a little hook, the bug gliders take more adjusting for pitch control. At one extreme you have stalling in peaks and valleys. Adding more weight to the front will correct stalling. At the opposite extreme, the glider dives. Cutting off front weight will correct diving. For micro-adjusting, there's an easier way than adding or subtracting weight. Levering the wire way out like this affects the glider just like adding more front weight. Bending it way back like this is just like cutting off front weight.
other things affect pitch too. Adding more camber or curve to the wing also has an effect similar to adding weight, and lowering the elevons is like adding weight to the front too. Having so many variables is confusing at first. As you work with it, you'll get used to it. What do you do if the glider always turns one way? Bend the opposite elevon flap up more. Bending an elevon up more might make the glider stall again, so you might have to adjust the pitch with the wire in front again. When model airplane people adjust for flight, they call it trimming. There you go. Nice, nice. Awesome. Oh, excellent. That was great, and, and you made a great recovery. Thank you, that was good. You can decorate your gliders with markers, but be gentle. If you push too hard, you'll warp the surfaces. Small gliders are easy to transport and store. Because they're so lightweight, you can just throw them into a box in a jumble or nest them to take up less space. The safest way might be to put them in a book. Of course, you'll have to reform them again. I'm going to let go now. It's all yours. <laughs> If you've been able to make and surf the gliders without somebody there in person to show you, that's a remarkable accomplishment. Although it's fun to wow people with your mysterious levitating skills, I hope that you'll also be a teacher. There's no greater satisfaction than showing other people how to do things. Some turbulence. Yeah, let him have a shot at it. Keep it up high. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Not a floor. Nice. 